Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Bismillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfir wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihu allah fala mudilla lah, wa man yudilhu fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilahi illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Qala Allah ta'ala ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون All praise due to Allah. We praise Him, seek for His assistance and forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Him from evils of our souls and our misdeeds. No one can mislead whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. And no one can no one can be guided who serve Allah causes to go astray. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone. He has no partner. I also testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave in the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all those who followed him and will follow him in righteousness till the day of judgment. Ibad Allah, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yasirli Amri Wahlal Uqtatam al Lisani Yifahu Kawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's khutbah is going to be about a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us to take advantage of five blessings before five other blessings, before they're gone. And the hadith goes as follows. عن ابن عباس قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس شبابك قبل حرمك وصحتك قبل سقمك وغناك قبل فقرك وفراقك قبل شغلك وحياتك قبل موتك ابن عباس reported the messenger of Allah peace and blessings be upon him said take advantage of five before five your youth before your old age your health before your illness, your wealth before your poverty, your free time before you become preoccupied in your life before your death. In today's khutbah, I'm going to be going talking about each one, but specifically, the main focus today will be about the last one, your life before your death. But to start off, the hadith starts, and Prophet Muhammad says, take advantage of five before five. Your youth, before your old age. And alhamdulillah, the youth, what does the youth mean? Youth means having strength. Youth means having time. Youth means not having a lot of responsibilities. Youth means having that drive, that push, that when you get older, that's not there anymore. Youth means you're healthy. Youth means that you have t- more time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, that idea of youth is taken for granted. Especially here in America. In all around the world, is, but since we're here in America, we're going to focus on here. The idea of youth is an idea of having fun, of wasting your time, of going out with your friends, playing video games, enjoying sports, going out to this party, that party, let me go over here, let me go over there. But when you ask, what time did you put for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why did, are there so many ahadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa talks about the youth? Why are there so many ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the youth? As if for us to be wasting our time, to be wasting our energy for that, for something other than the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that truly the meaning of youth, of the youth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said in the Prophet Muhammad gave many and many advice to. 
We all know that the youth is what makes a nation. And at the same time, is what destroys a nation. If the youth themselves aren't prepared to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by fight doesn't mean just only physical, but mentally, going out to the people, understanding Islam, reading the Quran and the Sunnah, owning it, that isn't there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about this. And based off the audience that I have right now, we all can look back to our youth. Even me, I'm still 19, alhamdulillah. But I can still look back to two, three, four years ago. And you realize, I could have put a lot more time. I could have put a lot more effort for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for learning about Islam. And there's a reason why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, your youth before your old age. One of the five blessings that once it's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. So then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues. And he says, your health before your illness. Subhanallah. What happened in the last year and a half with COVID? Where in a matter of two weeks, the whole world's changed. You went from being all healthy, not worrying about your life, to worrying about something that you can't even see, that you can't, you can't even know that's in you. Wondering whether I'm going to be sick, whether I'm going to be sick on the bed for two or three days, whether I'm going to be in the hospital, in the incubator, or la samah Allah, I'm going to end up dying on the, my, on the bed. We went from a time when we weren't worried about our health, so now we are even wearing masks 24-7 every place. Went through the whole time of social distancing to being so worried about our health. And it would be foolish of us to not remind ourselves this blessing of health. We can't take granted, take for granted what health means. Health is what allows you to make ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Health is what allows you to learn more about Islam. Health is what allows you to do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So think about that. Something that we took for granted, we saw before our eyes, how sacred, how, what of a blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. And in my case as well, I have ulcerative colitis. And that means I have frequent stomach pains. But what, do I look at that as a downfall? Do I look at that, oh yeah, since I'm sick, I can't use my time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. The way we need to look at health is that despite, even if I don't have 100%, I only have 80% of my health, 90% of my health, 60, 50, 40, 30, whatever health you may have, whatever is in your capability, Use that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it means to use your health. Because if we go by the excuse that I'm not completely healthy, I'm not in the right shape to go make it better to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to more, learn more about Islam, we're never going to get anything done. And all these blessings, your youth, in your health, your wealth, your time, in your life, you use it to your utmost capability. Doesn't matter if you have the biggest amount of health or the least amount of health. You use what you can. And continuing on, in the next part of the hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ says, Your wealth before your poverty. Your wealth before your poverty. What does wealth mean? Wealth means is what you have to go buy, to go use, you know, get some stuff for your family, food, things like that. How you interact in your daily life. What the value that Allah subhanahu the value that gets you things. That's what wealth is. But wealth doesn't mean you have to be extremely wealthy. That's a common misconception. That when you say you, when you have wealth, that means you have to be extremely wealthy to use it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Wealth is whatever you own. 
So wealth, despite if I only have a thousand dollars on me, or I have a hundred thousand, or I have a million, and on and on. The way the, when the Prophet Muhammad says your wealth before your poverty, that means whatever wealth you may have on you, you use that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable on the day of judgment. He will ask you, that wealth that I gave you, how did you use it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you waste it here and there on things that aren't for my sake? Or for example, when you were using your wealth to get your education, did you take it for granted? Where you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to use this all the best to get money and things that I can support a family, but never thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along the way? Is that how you're going to plan on using your wealth? These are things that we have to think about, things that we have to realize, things we have to question ourselves. These are blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, take advantage of it before it's gone. And unfortunately, we take this for granted. And that's why this reminder was given by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The fourth part of the hadith says your free time before you become preoccupied. Your free time before you become preoccupied. That free time, when you're young, you have a lot of free time from elementary school, middle school, high school. You have relatively more free time. You don't have as many responsibilities. Your focus is just so I can pass my class, but everything else, you have that time. But then as you grow older, when you go to college, you realize your classes get, start becoming harder. Realize now I have to go find an internship. Now I have to work. And then towards your end of, the, end of college, you're trying to look for that job. You get more responsibilities, added responsibilities, added responsibilities. After you find that job, you start want to focus on your job, make sure that you succeed so you can be, do even better. You get a lot more money. Why? So you can get married. Added on responsibilities. And each time you add respons- added on responsibility, that's less time you have to use. Now after you get married, you start having kids. Now you want to make sure you take care of your kids for, for the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to take care of them. Which means what? You got to put time and effort in taking care of them. And then once your kids grow up, you start to think back to yourself. Subhanallah, 67 years just went past me. I never thought to myself when I was 15, 16, I would kept on saying, oh, later on I'll put more time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll, I'll get back to it later. I'll learn more about Islam later. When I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of busy right now. And trust me, I say it myself too. I tell my mom, I tell my dad, I tell my, I tell my friends that I'm busy right now. I'm really, really busy. But the thing is that unfortunately, life doesn't wait for you to become more free. It just adds more responsibility. And you're going to become more busy. So you got to make sure that you take advantage of this time. Because the time that we have is from... We, from we, when we come out of the womb until we put in our grave. That's the time we have to take advantage. And that links to my next part of the hadith where it says, your life before your death. Take advantage of the, your life that you have before you die. And honestly, that's the, most, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest blessing we have. Because everything else in this hadith, your youth, your health, your wealth, your free time, all that falls in your life. It depends on how you use your life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Let me give you this situation. You go to a doctor. You know, and he tells you that you have a terminal illness. And you have a month to live. Now you have two situations. In this month that you live, are you going to have the most fun in it? Do everything that you wanted to do in this life. Enjoy everything you can. Are you the opposite? Where you're going to be what? Using your time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing I only have a month to live. Let me use it for his sake, because I don't know. I'm not sure whether I have a place in Jannah or not. No one here can guarantee that he has a place in Jannah. And trust me, 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has swore that this is the only chance we have in this life. So it's on us how we use our time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we use our life for his sake. So please let this sink in. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, all praise to be Allah and in blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Regarding your life before your death, I'm going to bring up some ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون الله سبحانه وتعالى says when death approaches any of them they cry my lord let me go back. So I, may, so I may do good in what I left behind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond, never. It is only a useless appeal they make. And there is a barrier behind them until the day they are resurrected. SubhanAllah, think about that. When death approaches any of them, from the disbelievers, and they cry, my Lord, let me go back. Give me a second chance. I didn't use my life before I died. I didn't use it for your sake like you wanted me to. He says, give me another chance. Just one more chance. I can do good this time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say what? Never. Never. It's a useless appeal. I told you I had one chance. I gave you all this opportunity. I was merciful in your life. I give you all the chances you needed. But you still didn't decide to take it. <coughs> and he warned us that we only have one chance. And he will put a barrier between you and Jannah. SubhanAllah. And Allah Taala continues in the surah. And says, فَإِذَا نُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ then when the trumpet will be blown, there will be no kinship between them on that day, nor will they even care to ask about one another. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt, they will not even care a single bit about you on the day of judgment. They're going to be worried about themselves, how they use their life. Your mother that took care of you since you were born, that she put so much time and effort into you. And even when you get a small scratch on you, she'll start crying for you, making dua for you, taking care of you when you were sick at night. She would stay awake for your sake. And on a day of judgment, she won't care about you at all whatsoever. Everyone on that day will be worried about themselves. Everyone will be worried. Whether did I use my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَصِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ And for those whose scale is heavy with good deeds, it is they who will be successful. But those whose scale is light, they all have doomed themselves staying in hell forever. Brothers, the only reason why we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why we listen to His rules, why we follow the Quran and the Sunnah, why we're even saying about using your life before your death, the whole reason is because we want the two choices at the end of the day, Jannah and Jahannam. That's the whole reason we're living our life. If you put everything to aside, everything aside, that's the, the reason why. 
Whether you want to go to Jannah or Jahannam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if your scales are heavy with the good deeds, you enter Jahannam. And inshallah, we are all part of those people. But then, the people that are scales are heavy, not heavy with the good deeds, are light. Those are the people that will enter Jahannam. And those are the same people that didn't use their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, تَلْفَحُوا وُجُوهَهُمُ النَّارُ وَهُمْ فِيهَا كَالِحُونَ And he says the fire will burn their faces, leaving them deformed. And I can continue on and on going about how heavy the punishment of Jahannam is. We, we all realize that. We all know how heavy Jahannam is. We have to make it a goal for ourselves to avoid that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. And he says, أَلَمْ تَكُنْ آيَاتِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَكُنْتُمْ بِهَا تُكَذِّبُونَ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْنَا شِقْوَتُنَا وَكُنَّا قَوْمًا ضَالِّينَ رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ It will be said, were my revelations not recited to you, but you used to deny them. They will cry, our Lord, ill fate took hold of us, so we became misguided people. Our Lord, take us out of this fire. Then if we ever return to denial, we will truly be wrongdoers. This ayat, these ayat are talking about the people that will be so shameless. They will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them that were my revelation not recited to you, but you used to deny them, and they will respond, and they will cry. Our Lord, our ill fate took hold of us, so we became misguided people. They will say that we were misguided in, the, in this life. We were misguided. We didn't know better. And they will say, our Lord, take, it out, take, it, take us out of this fire. And if we return to denial, we will truly be wrongdoers. Give us one more chance. One more chance. That's all I need. And if, if I go back to my being, my being misguided, to denying you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I truly deserve this punishment, subhanAllah. Even when they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them a chance, they're putting an if condition on them. And if I return to denial, then you, I'm truly a wrongdoer. Which shows how severe Jahannam will be in Allah and how people are going to be asking just for one more chance. And we're reminded constantly where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us you only have one more chance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here's his response to these people will be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response will be very simple. He said, be despised in there. Do not ever Plead with me again. Subhanallah. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ruler of all universes, the ruler of all things, the one who will decide whether you know the Jannah or Jahannam, the most merciful person, but also the most just, but also he will tell you what? Be despised in there. And do not ever Plead with me again. Brothers, we only have one chance. And all these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Muhammad wa sallam, brought up in his hadith, your youth, your health, your wealth, your time, especially your life, take advantage of that before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it to you. Be despised in there and never, ever plead with me again. Let us understand our deen the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to understand it. Go and read the Qur'an. Understand its meaning and its rules. Read the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And understand it and apply it in our life. And know your role to carry it to the people, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, without deviation from his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's path. And without compromising. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he never compromised. 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع مجيب الدعوات O oh Allah, we seek your favor to let our hearts be full of your gratitude and keep our tongue moist with your remembrance. O oh Allah, guide us to know what is good. Make us benefit from what we have learned and increase our knowledge. O oh Allah, give us in this world that is which is good and the hereafter that is which is better and save us from the torment of the fire. O oh Allah, provide protection to our brothers and sisters and our children in Asham, Palestine, Yemen, Afghanistan, Kashmir, Burma, Iraq, Pakistan, and other parts of the world. O oh Allah, keep us in them on a the straight path and fill their hearts with patience and tranquility. O oh Allah, unite the Muslim Ummah and provide the Nusra to the righteous guided Muslim and establish Islam as implemented by the righteous guided Khulafa. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. ربنا لا تؤخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن, الفنش... وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعز وعد أعلى وعز وجل وأتم وهم وأكبر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran tafsir, and Sirah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment, and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about islampodcasts.com.